Today, Grade 10, in this lesson, we're going to be exploring the hydrosphere. First of all, we know that there are four spheres, and we learned about them in our previous lesson. There is the lithosphere, the aquasphere, the hydrosphere, and the biosphere. It's important to realize that the water moves through each of these spheres and produces different functions. It dissolves ions, it deposits ions and mineral salts, it pulls down the atmosphere, and it warms it up. So it has many functions. One of the things it does do is weathering. Now there are two basic processes for weathering. The one is disintegration, which is the breaking of the rocks, and the other is decomposition. Decomposition is when we have a chemical reaction with the salts in the rocks, we call new substances. And if you look at the yeah, you can see the tip of the Grand Canyon. And this is due to a lot of weathering over many, many years. Let's look at some more, talk some more about the disintegration. As water freezes between 4 degrees and 0 degrees Celsius, it expands. It causes rocks to crack and break. And we've got this cute little animation that tells us how ice cracks rocks. Loading. Loading done. Water expands when it freezes. You can see for yourself. Pour water in an ice cube tray. Fill each hole just to the top. Carefully put the tray in the freezer and come back in several hours. The ice cubes will poke up above the tray. When it rains, water can seep into cracks in rock. When the water freezes, it expands. The frozen water takes up more room than the liquid water. This puts pressure on the rock around it. Sometimes the rock breaks and the crack widens. When the weather gets warmer, the ice melts. More water may trickle in. Later it might freeze again. The ice again makes the crack even larger. When water freezes and melts many times in cracks in the rock, it can break solid rock. This process is called ice wedging. So you can see that even water, something as simple as water, by freezing and melting and freezing and melting, can actually cause rocks to crack and break. Now, this water is incredibly important. It is part of all living cells. Whether it be plant or animal, it makes up to 75% of every cell. Without water, your cells would not be able to carry out their normal functions and life could not exist. Water also provides a habitat. Many gases such as your carbon dioxide, your oxygen, your nutrients such as your nitrates and ammonia and other ions are all dissolved in the water. So this is crucial for life to exist in water. So if you see on the right hand side we've got an ecosystem which is made up mainly of marine animals or all marine animals. And here you can see you've got different types of fish and you've got coral and they're all living in the water. You can also have this type of ecosystem where you've got plant and um, plants, land and water plants and land and water animals all living in conjunction. And this is like an example of a wetland. So water is crucial for life to exist. It also helps in regulating climate. The water has a specific high high specific heat, which means it holds onto heat for a very long time. It takes a long time to heat up, but then it also takes a long time to cool down. And this helps regulate the temperature on Earth. On top of that, our ocean currents also help disperse heat. So if you look over here, you can see the different types of currents. And we all know that on the eastern side of Africa, we've got that warm Mozambique current, which brings warm water. And on the cold side, we've got the cold Benguela current, which transports water. Then, water is essential for humans. We use it in various ways. First of all, drinking, most important. Then we use it for domestic use, such as washing and cleaning. We also use it in industry and in hydropower. Now, hydropower is only slowly coming into form now, but it will, in the end, be used a lot because it's a huge source of power. The threat, the main threat is pollution, which is a major, major problem. Remember that water is one of our most definitely desired resources, okay? And it is slowly becoming more and more polluted, which is a problem. 
the main area of pollution is actually coming from humans and industries. It's our waste products. So we need to be careful not to litter and not to cause there to be pollution in the water. You also get nutrient pollution. Now let me explain what this is. It's called eutrophication. So what happens is the farmers use a lot of fertilizer. Usually they're using inorganic fertilizer. And when it rains, the fertilizer, which is sitting on the top of the soil, rushes into it, pours into the lakes and the rivers. Now what happens is because this fertilizer provides nutrients, this water over here becomes nutrient rich, it becomes lots and lots of nutrients. The algae and all the plants in this area, they bloom. They grow lots, they grow fast, and they grow way faster than they would normally grow. So it ruins the ecosystem because normally as they grow, so the fish would eat them up. So then what happens is the algae blooms and it uses up the oxygen in the water. And as it does this, then what happens is the other plants die, the algae dies, and the fish die. So you end up with a whole bunch of bad water. And that's what happens, and that is called eutrophication. So you need to be careful of that. We can also have an overuse of water. And only a very small amount in hypersphere of water is fresh water. In other words, it's what they call potable water. In other words, we can drink it. So we have to be very careful not to use it. And people use this water for stupid things like washing cars or for um, washing the sidewalks down and everything else. And we could actually be using recycled water or we could be using salt water. We need to be careful how we use water. It is estimated by that 2030, South Africa will not have enough water to meet the water needs of this country. So we have to be start being very careful, start using um, the water more responsibly and maybe start collecting our rainwater. Right, great tens, I hope that you've learned a lot about the hydrosphere in this lesson and that you'll take on board all the uses for water and all the threats to the water as well as how the water affects our living. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great day.